where do we start? When we looked at GMO 2.0, we realized we cannot rely on changing consumer behavior in order to stop it because there's mosquitoes being released, there's grass, there's trees, all sorts of things that will be unaffected by your choices in the supermarket. So we looked at what the strategy could be and we considered this question, which GMOs carry the greatest threat? Think about it. I'm gonna give you only 10 more seconds. So think about which organisms carry the greatest threat to, to the earth. The answer is the microbiome. Oops, there we are. The microbiome is the bacteria, the viruses, the algae, the fungus, archaea, that are like the micro Jedi army that works on our behalf inside us and around the world. It is so important that there's, it's co-evolved with humans for so long that there are intricate, awe-inspiring mechanisms set up to create a healthy microbiome in newborns. In the second trimester, milk digesting proteins enter the birth canal to inoculate the newborn. About 27% of the newborn's gut bacteria comes from the milk. So the milk has a specific formulation. The skin on the nipple of the mother provides about 10% of the microbiome. So the mother's passing on the microbiome from the birth canal, from the milk, from the skin. And, so, and a good portion of the milk is entirely undigestible by the infant. That is not a design flaw. These oligosaccharides are designed to feed the microbiome. They are undigestible by the stomach, by the small intestine. They're designed to get to the large intestine to feed the microbes. And here's what's really interesting. The saliva of the infant has a microbiome. When the infant nurses or breastfeeds, then the information about the health status of the infant is conveyed back to the mother through the microbiome, which could theoretically change the formulation. Hey, Jeffrey Smith, sorry to interrupt you. Um, your mic has a little bit of, of uh, feedback for some reason. All right, let's try moving it closer. How's that? Is that better? Um, maybe move it a little further away. All right. Is there, is, is there a power button on, on the mic? Uh, I can uh, power it off and power it on. How's it doing now? Yeah. Can you, can you power it off and power it on? All right. How's that? It's better. Thank you. It's feeding. It's feeding. The, the default. The default. Oh. So try let me try. Do test one, two, three? Test one, two, two three. Two, three. Uh, we're getting some feedback with that. Um, you, All right. Can, can, All right. You turn, turn the, turn the, turn the uh, other mic you had on before. Yep. Here we go. So it's not as good a sound, but ultimately it's not going to drive you crazy with the feedback. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. We last left our infants. Uh, breastfeeding and, re and exchanging information with the breast, the nursing mother. Now, all of this is set up because creating a healthy microbiome in the infant can affect the health of that person for the rest of their lives and be passed on to the next generation. If you end up like cesarean birth, etc., or have some problem with the establishment of the microbiome, even the lack of breastfeeding, all of these can affect the microbiome, uh, the, the balance of it, and that could influence one's health for the rest of their lives. But it's not just in terms of newborns. It turns out that we are outsourcing 
90% or so of the metabolic and chemical reactions to the microbiome. We can get away with a measly 23,000 genes because we use the genetic information of the 3.5 million genes in the microbiome living inside us. There are microbes that do things that our, our cells cannot. And we've outsourced it, and we're fine with that. And the microbiome has the capacity to even cause us to want to eat a cupcake. It'll cause us to want to eat sugar if that will feed the microbiome. It'll cause us to want to be more social if it wants to, to receive more microbiome input from others. When, it's, when we're doing things that the microbiome likes, it can release dopamine into the reward center so that it's training us, reinforcing us for the uh, work that we're doing on its behalf.